In this video, we're going over what distribution you should start with depending on where you're at in the Linux journey. And I know what you're saying. I always say distribution doesn't matter. And the whole reason I say this one point of why distribution doesn't matter is distribution is the starting point. There's never going to be a silver bullet. So don't take this video as, uh, hey, this distribution is going to be perfect for you out of the box because that distribution doesn't exist. You have to make it perfect for you. But this is at least going to give you a good starting point. And I'm going to outline some of the, the big distributions out there and really who they're meant for and who they're catered to. Because uh, depending on where you are at in your Linux journey, uh, you know, it'll appeal to you. So with that, let's jump into this. So the first one I wanted to showcase is Ubuntu because uh, at the, its core, almost all distributions uh, that are known to newbie users revolve around Ubuntu. It's a very newbie friendly distribution and it is based on Linux Mint or, or Linux Mint and Pop! OS are both based on Ubuntu uh, among a hundred other distributions, but those two are ones I always recommend for newbie users. So uh, I wanted to bring up these three in tandem because to me, they're all the same thing. They just have a different aesthetic. So with that, I'm going to flip through Ubuntu. Uh, this one is probably what people know the most of. It's probably the most widely used distribution in Linux, and that's because the installation is very simple. And that goes for Linux Mint and Pop! OS 2. They're almost mimic Ubuntu's installation process. Extremely simple. Any user can pretty much do it. So with that, the desktop schemes of each one uh, are considerably different. In, in most instances between these three that I talk about. So Ubuntu, it looks like this. You have your basic desktop. This is running what's called the GNOME desktop environment or GNOME among veteran Linux users. And this one is a little bit odd. I don't really like its layout, its look and feel, but it may appeal to you. So definitely check this one out as far as Ubuntu's goes. I never recommend it to new users because there's a lot of things about this distribution that I just simply don't like personally. But I can definitely appreciate that it is the most widely used and really the very first distribution that brought Linux to pretty much all new users back in the mid 2000s. However, the next two options I consider uh, a lot better for a new user. So the first one up here is Linux Mint. This one is really nice. You have this very Windows-esque look and feel. It uses what's called the Cinnamon desktop environment, and it is really something uh, because so many new users immediately go to Linux Mint because it just feels kind of like Windows, but it's a lot faster. It's a lot more reliable. Uh, it has all those benefits of Linux, so the learning curve's not quite as high, which is really nice. Now, all three of these that I'm talking about all use what's called PPAs and also the APT package manager. So if you ever see an instruction guide online that says, hey, install this PPA, that's the repository where you get your programs from. And then you also have APT install. This is how you install a program on any uh, Debian or Ubuntu based distribution. So this encompasses pretty much half of Linux. So this is where most guides come from. But so many new users coming to Linux, uh, just know there are other guides out there written for other distributions that I'm going to talk about. But uh, just know that if it is, says APT or PPA, this is mainly Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions, um, and that's where a lot of this comes from. Uh, so when looking at guides and following along, it's really important to distinguish the package managers, uh, but this was uh, Linux Mint is really what I want to talk about in the Cinnamon desktop environment. Now, going forward, you have Pop! OS. Now, this looks a lot like Ubuntu in a lot of ways because it uses the same desktop environment, GNOME. So people are like, well, why would I use Pop! instead of Ubuntu? And the reason being is it's much more friendly to gamers. Out of the box, they have two types of installs. So if you have an NVIDIA card, they have a specific install for NVIDIA users, which is really nice. They also have a lot of good system tweaks. So 
This makes probably the de facto recommendation when it comes to gamers coming to Linux. Almost all gamers need a lot of these tweaks that Pop! OS has already made. And Pop! OS is made by System76, which is a, a manufacturer that basically manufactures pre-built Linux machines. And they are in business to just do Linux desktop for the most part. So they're an incredible incredible backing when it comes to pop os it's not going anywhere and it is a really good operating system with all these tweaks so that's why i always recommend it to new users uh, between the two pop os and linux mint i think you'll probably find your sweet spot right in here to begin so all this is for beginners in, in a linux distribution i find that so many people get used to it and then some people just stick on these and never change and that's completely okay but other people's want a little more or want more customization and that's when you get into other distributions or just want a different flavor altogether so with that this is kind of the beginner's realm now going past this you you jump into other distributions and i want to kind of jump over to a completely different type of distribution and that is fedora Fedora is based on what's called Red Hat Linux or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And this one is rock solid. I have my longest running Linux distribution here at the house actually is Fedora. And it's actually running Fedora 27, I think. And it's a, a laptop my wife won't allow me to touch. But it's an 11-year-old laptop that has just been running Fedora for a long time. And she uses it for schoolwork and other things. And she's like, hey, you're not allowed to touch my laptop. Anything you touch, you like to tinker and eventually break. And I'm like, well, that's a, that's a fair assessment. But Fedora is specifically a very stable distribution. It's very good out of the box. Uh, one tweak I'd make is its package manager, which is DNF, or uh, it also has yum on there, but that's more of a legacy thing. Most package installs are DNF install in the package. And this one out of the box doesn't offer a whole bunch of uh, software packages. So you need to install something called RPM Fusion. This vastly expands its arsenal to install many programs. So like Steam and other uh, proprietary programs that aren't necessarily baked into Fedora, well, you'd install this RPM package and be able to get a hold of a lot of that stuff that you'd want, like codecs to watch your movies and other things that you may need uh, to install. You'd probably want to add this RPM Fusion package, which is a one-line installation, so I make it sound like a big deal, but it's, it's really not. You, you add RPM Fusion repositories to Fedora, and it becomes a very, very solid uh, Linux desktop environment, and that's why I mentioned it in this video. So Fedora, excellent. I love it. I use it on my laptops. It's great for kind of an intermediate user that kind of starting to understand Linux, uh, but also uh, it can be very friendly to a complete noob in, in many instances, because like I said, uh, my wife uses it all the time for schoolwork and absolutely loves Fedora. Uh, they never have any problems with it and it just is rock solid. So uh, a great repurposing of that and it, I'm not a huge fan of some of the aspects of Fedora, such as the GNOME desktop environment, again, popping its head up. I'm not a huge fan of this uh, layout, but uh, overall, I think it's a great operating system. So with the Fedora distribution out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and say the next one is pretty much for your intermediate, your tinker to expert user, uh, or, or maybe someone that just wants a little bit more. Now, this is obviously Vanilla Arch. This is the person that really wants to learn about the nuts and bolts of Linux. And I would say installing a Vanilla Arch is where I learned most of my knowledge. It is absolutely incredible. Why people love Arch Linux so much is because you can install pretty much anything. So many people say only an expert can install it. Um, while I disagree with that, I think many people can follow along and eventually get Arch installing. The reason why people love Arch so much is because of its AUR. You can install any package on here. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, however, it requires a pretty technically savvy person to install Arch Linux. Now, some people say, well, I want all that, but I don't really want to mess with this really complex, you know, expert-like distribution, which is Arch Linux. 
and really the next package uh, side by side, depending on what you're doing. If you're a tinker and you really want to learn about Linux, I say vanilla Arch. However, if you've done Fedora, you've done your Ubuntu based distributions like Pop OS and Linux Mint, probably your next step would be Manjaro. So, Manjaro is more of a distribution for. Uh, I would say a beginning to intermediate, just above that initial step into Linux, because oh, right out of the box, I think Manjaro is very good, but there's certain aspects of it that I just don't recommend to new users because their update process and some other things uh, I don't particularly enjoy, and I don't think many new users would enjoy a lot of that change that happens. However, any Arch-based distributions, which I'm talking about Manjaro and Vanilla Arch in this instance, is you get bleeding edge packages. If you just heard that there's a new uh, video driver out or a new message driver for your AMD GPU and you need to install it right away, Arch Linux is where it's at because you get that package almost immediately directly from the repositories without having to install anything which is pretty incredible. All you, all you do is just a system update and it just updates all those existing packages because of how quickly the turnaround time is in Arch. But with that, it's a double-edged sword, meaning that's awesome. You get the newest packages, but you also get the newest packages. And why that's a bad thing is sometimes there is some issues here. I've had my Arch install break before because I updated something you know, a couple days after it was released and it had some bugs. So I didn't enjoy that process. But with that, if you're going to do Arch, always use Time Shift. And I made a video about that. I'll link it up here in the title card. But with it, check out this. It is a really incredible backup software that is completely free, as with most things in Linux. And you can re roll it back. So you do your updates and go, oh, crap, it's buggy or it just doesn't fit your, what you're going for. You just hit roll back this time. Within probably a couple minutes, you're back to exactly where you were, which is great. So any Arch user out there runs backups unless they're just a madman and they enjoy their stuff breaking. Because if you update Arch every single week, it will eventually break uh, because a lot of times uh, people install stuff from the AUR, which makes it so you can install pretty much any program out there, but you can also install any program out there, which will eventually probably break some stuff. And that's why you need to have good backups on Arch. So this is a, a very thing where a lot of veteran users end up on and they love, like I personally love Arch because I love having all those new packages, but I also understand there's an unstable concept to Arch where if you install new packages all the time, eventually something just breaks. Where on a lot of the Debian and Ubuntu's and, and Fedora, uh, all these usually are tested for months before they're released to the public. So you really don't run into very many bugs, if any at all, where in Arch it's much more common. And that's why I always say good backups. So these are like the three stages or the progression of choosing a distribution in Arch. Uh, there's a lot of other distributions out there, but really, this is the progression. You should be trying this section first. If you don't know any of these distributions, start with the Ubuntu chain up at the top. Go with Pop! OS or Linux Mint, whichever flavor you want, and then progress to something different. And obviously, check out my Linux Basics series going over desktop environments. This is really important because the desktop environments is how things look and feel and uh, kind of how you want a start menu or you want a different settings menu or you have a different uh, taste in how it manages your windows on the screen. Those types of things are all part of that desktop environment that I've talked so much about in my Linux Basics series. So check it out if you haven't already. Also, if you need to get in contact with me or like to contact me anywhere, check out my website, ChrisTitus.com. I'm going to start posting more and more to there and do more how-to guides and written guides for people because I think that's extremely important to have the written aspect and also the visual aspect. So I've recently called back on a lot of my videos doing daily content, and I'm looking at expanding this and, and figuring out the best way to incorporate that in, in my website. And the reason for that is just so you could easily follow along with the written aspect because a lot of people don't want to watch 
a 10 or 15 minute YouTube video when they could just read it in literally a couple minutes. So I'm, I'm looking at putting, breaking down a lot of this into more white papers and putting it on my website. So check it out. And then also let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm always curious to hear from you guys. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.